this is about the cutest little aluminum Christmas tree that we've ever found, and I found it in a way that I really didn't expect to. When I showed up to the sale, I knew it was going to be pretty competitive. I showed up right before it started and was 45th, so I had to wait like almost an hour. Um, there were a lot of vintage Christmas things listed in the pictures, um, and I was fully expecting to not have or see any of them when I walked in, but lo and behold, there were two whole towered ceramics right in front of me, which was really exciting. I did come across some do-it-yourself DIY craft sequin ornaments, which were really cute. Um, and they did have these little angels, but they were marked 15, which I thought was a little much. You know, this company seemed to mark some things, but not all things. But um, it was sort of helpful in deciding what to take versus leave behind. I was a little afraid that the price would be a little steep. Um, but I found myself at this little bin of different Christmas ornaments, which upon first look, there was a lot of, you know, different materials that indicated that these were probably a bit newer things that are crocheted you know are from the 70s and 80s um, but i did a little bit of digging and found some things that were a bit older and made in japan and one of our tips for when you go to an estate sale is to always check everything check it twice because you never know what may be hiding like this little sugared bear next to the thermocare so he went right into the bag as i continued to search now at this estate sale i was alone janine did not join me so i'm working by myself here a lot of the times we like to divide and conquer um but you know it had been an hour into the sale so i didn't think i was going to find too much but i turned around and saw these really cute christmas sweaters which are pretty collectible they're the original you know ugly christmas sweater um, when i find a cute one i like to pick them up depending on the price I then turned around and did a double check on this table since I spotted some, you know, bit older ornaments that I had missed on first glance, like this really cool milk glass ornament and this Mrs. Claus mug. It had a little angel inside. I put it back where I figured it belonged. Um, I've never seen a Mrs. Claus Santa mug before of that size, so I thought that was really unique, probably from the mid-century, and it went into my bag. The only other Christmas left at this point were some bells and, you know, different pieces that aren't super collectible and they were marked $20 each. Um, and I actually have one of these, so while they were very cool to see, I did not end up taking any. Next, I came across this young girl's bedroom, I guess. It was quite a time capsule. There were toys and different dolls all from like the 60s and 70s, which was pretty cool to see. You know, it's always amazing when we go to these sales and everything is basically untouched since 1975. I then went down into the basement and came across some older books. I thought that Bambi was really cool and the Peter Pan. I just wasn't sure the prices at this point, so I didn't grab everything I saw. But hiding in the basement was this little elf pencil, which I did take. And there were a lot of books and crafting things downstairs that were a lot older. I came across this pile of records, which I looked through. I was hoping to find a Halloween one, which are pretty hard to find, but you never know. Sometimes you can come across them. Usually it's Christmas and different children's ones, which was the case here, but still fun to look at. This sale definitely must have taken a while to organize. As you guys might have just saw, there's a whole other like crawl space that was just filled with stuff. Uh, this family definitely held on to things and there's a whole section of books to look through which was really cool vintage books these were all older for sure i'm mainly looking for things that are you know maybe crafting related holiday related cooking related things that just have really fun graphics that draw my eye this was really cool it was in french i believe which was different there were a few books that i came across that were in french um, which I've actually never seen before in an estate sale, so that was pretty cool. And I'm also keeping an eye out for any Halloween books like this spook book, which I was so excited to see. As you can see, it has a little tear, but I was able to carefully fold it back, and it looks like it can still be in one piece. So this was definitely coming home with me. This was a really fun sale since there was so much to look through. Um, these are types of sales that Janine and I really enjoy going to. They're typically called digger sales since you are encouraged to go into the home as it is really untouched and quite literally dig through the contents of the home. Um, it's the way that we find some of our most, you know, amazing finds, just things that have been left and unearthed for, you know, decades so while sometimes it's sad to think that these are all the items that have been left behind, um, the way we like to look at it is it's a great opportunity to repurpose and rehome some things that would otherwise end up in the landfill and still deserve to be treasured or at least kept. Um, obviously, a lot of this will end up probably 
tossed. Um, it's just the way it is, right? They probably need to clear out the home, but at least we were able to come in and save some things as were all the other shoppers who came to the estate sale. I love looking at old packaging. It's just so cool to see, you know, it's amazing that people have kept this over the many years. Now on the upstairs floor, things were a bit newer. Um, I came across this room. I know my filming is not the best, but all this stuff guys was like crafting supplies if you were a crafter this was definitely your sale to come to there was tons of paint and wooden things and just amazing crafting supplies definitely could have picked up a great deal i love this kitchen it is like a mid-century 70s kitchen that i absolutely love um and i always look in the kitchens for you know vintage party supplies noisemakers candles you never know where you're gonna find i open up every single drawer and take a peek um, and it looks like and it's exciting when the drawers are full they have not been touched by the company or anyone in quite a while um, but i didn't find anything this sale had a ton of vintage clothing i think it's what drew in a lot of people to the sale janine and i don't really delve in vintage clothing but it's really fun to see and we will pick up you know pieces um but vintage clothing in our area at, even at estate sales tends to be pretty pricey um, I took this vertical shot on my phone. This woman had some amazing pieces from like the 60s and 50s. Um, so amazing that it is going to be saved. You know, people were buying these things um, and they'll be repurposed. And it's just a great piece of history that can live on. And look at this. Oh my goodness. Now, if there was anything I could buy from this sale, it would have been these lamps. This pair was $400. Absolutely amazing. Belongs to a museum. I'm so glad that these are going to be loved and repurposed. So yes, this is the big score of the day. And the reason why it wasn't in the footage is because this guy was in its original box behind the counter or the person running the sale. And I guess nobody saw it. You know, when you go to these estate sales, there's a lot of competition and it's pretty intense. So sometimes you overlook some things. So this was behind the counter and it was marked $100, which um, if you guys aren't familiar with aluminum Christmas trees, that's a really great price for something like this. It is a little bit smaller, but it's so cute. This is how many feet? A three foot one. And I believe the height is based off of the rod in the middle. Now, this box didn't include the original stand. It actually would have come with a wooden stand, um, but they had this rotating base for $15 and I asked that they would bundle it all together since this one was missing its base. And the woman was really sweet and kind and she was like, sure, we could do a hundred for both, um, which I think is really fair. Um, but it is obvious if you take a look at the rod, I won't unscrew it, but at the base of the rod, if I were to unscrew it right here, you could start to see some of the markings left by the screws here. So once you plug this in and I did test it, it works. It's a rotating base. These in themselves are pretty collectible. They can fetch $50 upwards of $100 on their own. The aluminum Christmas tree is in pretty great condition. It has all of its branches. And it is just a find that I'm really excited to bring home. I think Janine and I have like two or three of these already though, right? I this would be our thinking. fourth, I think. This would be our fourth. I think we have a little guy, but maybe not this small. So I've really been thinking about it. It will probably be for sale, um, but- I think <laughs> if not this one, mm -hmm. one of our trees will definitely be up for sale yep. on a whatnot sale, right? Yes, I would agree with that because we don't want to just keep them to have them. We would much rather share them with other vintage Christmas lovers. Um, so yeah, this was a really great find. Um, if you, great advice though, if you ever go to an estate sale, antique mall, wherever, and you find an aluminum Christmas tree, make sure that all the branches are there. Yes. Count even, this one had the instructions in it, so I knew how many branches belonged, but you can even count the holes in the middle of the rod to know how many branches they're supposed to be. So this one had all of its branches. The only thing missing was its base, but they had another base to go with it. If the base was nowhere to be found, and if it was incomplete, I probably would not have picked it up. It's sort of hard to find bases by themselves. You can find them on eBay, um, but that's like a personal decision if it's worth it for you. It did come with the original instructions, which is always handy and pretty cool to see. Um, this is a different aluminum Christmas tree than ones we have found because these have the little um, dots on each of the branches to tell you where to put them. So this branch, for example, has three black dots. So it tells us where to put it in the tree. That's pretty cool. I know people have commented that on our videos um, mm -hmm. and we've never come across an aluminum Christmas tree that has these markings. So if you have this aluminum Christmas tree, 
and you don't have the instructions, here is a good look at what they are. Here's the original stand. It was like a wooden base. So that's also something to note. And this is actually a four foot one, Janine. It says it right at the top. Oh, wow. So this was a great find, but I also got some more things I want to show you guys. I also found this really beautiful pink tree topper. Oh, wow, that's pretty. I mean, these are hard to come by in this mm -hmm. color with the three indent. This is a hard oh, one. So, look at those colors. We do collect these. Of course we collect them, so. We'll have to think about um, selling or keeping this one, but I just love the colors. Great find. I picked up some cute little miscellaneous um, Christmas decorations. I love these little plastic sugared ones. Mm -hmm. um, these are probably made in Japan from the 60s. And we've got Santa and this pretty angel. I found a Mrs. Claus little mini mug, which Janine, I don't think we've ever found a Santa, uh, Mrs. Claus version, have we? I don't think so, not Mrs. Claus. Pretty cool. I'd say maybe hard to find. Um, what I was really excited about, you guys saw, I snatched these up right away, were these Holt Howard camels. So Holt Howard is one of our favorite Christmas ceramic manufacturers from the mid-century. These are from 1960. Um, and these are the camel candle holders. I already have these in my collection. These do have a repair on both of the ears. Um, they were broken at some point and repaired. I'm going to try to dissolve that and re-affix it with some better glue. It has some old candle residue. So these will definitely need a little bit of a makeover, a little bit of refurbishment, but they are otherwise in really good condition and they will be available for sale. I'm actually thinking of doing an all ceramics Christmas sale, Janine. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be really fun. I know I have a lot of ceramics. Maybe Janine would be we happy for me do. to pass them along. <laughs> we, do. we do, we do. So these are probably gonna be available at some point. Um, we love Holt Howard and then Janine. So excited that you brought these home. I know, Janine was very excited when she saw yes. this. Yes, we don't have these in the collection, especially this one, so cool. Uh, I believe they're from the 60s, right? I think so. This one has a rip on the front. 1967, first wow. printing. Wow. Very cool. It does have a little rip, but that's all right. Dog's so cute. So cute. And then I also grabbed this for you, Janine, the Ghost of Dibble Hollow. I thought the cover was cool. Mm -hmm. Very spooky. And I think this is also from the 60s. Yeah, 1968, sixth printing. And lastly, I picked up this really cute, like, 80s, 90s vintage Christmas sweater. I am always on the lookout for these. I thought this one was really nice. Great detail, great condition. I want to keep this and wear it. How cute is it? So, yeah, that was a really interesting estate sale. Even though I was 45th in line and I waited close to an hour to get in, I still managed to find some really fun stuff, especially the um, aluminum Christmas tree. On you the really surprised base. me with that. I know. I could not believe that you were able to get this tree after being 45th in line. I know, and also just to note, not sure if I mentioned it earlier, but I paid $135 for everything, which I think with the tree topper and the whole towers, even in the condition that they are, is a great price considering we walked away or I walked away with an aluminum Christmas tree. Especially, especially with an aluminum it's Christmas so tree. Cute. And a revolving base. Yeah. So that was a fun sale. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me and I hope you guys have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye.